I picked up this Mophie 120 watt power adapter to see what it can do. I expect it to be a reasonably good power adapter. This adapter is listed on the Apple webpage, so this is the main reason for picking it up. It's a third party adapter promoted by Apple, so is it any good? The multi-port device has lots of power sharing options, so we will go through it and see if it beats the competition. I will be putting this adapter through its paces to find out what it can do. I will be checking to see whether it can hold up to the rated power, how the power sharing works, and how efficient, plus in general, how good of a power supply it is. After that last Satoshi video, the bar is very high for a power adapter over 100 watts. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons. Okay, let's start with the Mophie Speedport 120 120 watt 4 port GAN fast charger. The model is too long to mention here. Inside the box is the power adapter, a user manual, and a US figure 8 power cord. There aren't any extra plastic bits in the box at least. The power cord is about 4 feet long that is supplied with it. The power adapter doesn't look bad, it is a premium look and feel. The outer housing has a matte black finish. This device sticks with the usual arrangement for devices like this. One USB-A port and three USB-C ports. We will take a look at how the power is distributed later on. Around the back, we can see the ETL safety listing and a bunch of text describing the power outputs and current handling capability. The adapter also has a few other listing marks, which is nice to see. The adapter does have a little six mark with a circle around it, indicating that it should comply with the Department of Energy six requirements. The user manual is a giant fold out paper thing. I mean, really, it's huge. What it is exactly lacking is, well, nearly any information at all. The quick start guide is a picture showing plugging it in. Ha! No specifications, no information, but they do warn you that it might burst into a fireball. Useful. The packaging for this one weighs 108 grams on the heavier side, but not the worst I've seen. The power adapter weighs 424 grams with the power cord. This is heavy, but in comparison with other desktop adapters, it's not bad. Compared with the 120 watt anchor, it's 100. 96 grams and the Bassius is 220 grams. The physical comparison shows that this adapter is on the large size for a 120 watt adapter. It's nearly double the size of both the Anchor and the Bassius 120 watt adapters. I'm not sure what extra they crammed in the box, but it is large for the watts. Okay, time to plug it in and see what it can do. The first thing I noticed is the idle power consumption is about on average for a power adapter in this power range. The power adapter has a claim of Department of Energy 6 efficiency. The symbol is a mark that lets you know the power supplies meet a low enough idle power requirement and an efficiency level. This adapter just squeezes in with its idle power consumption as mentioned, but with a larger power supply, it's not the worst I've seen and it's not the best I've seen. The power adapter has a LED on the face. The LED is off when you plug in the power adapter. It takes around 10 watts before the LED turns on and then it is a soft white LED, not too bright. If you leave the cables plugged in, it won't keep the light on. The Mophie speed port has the normal modes of operation for a USB power delivery device. The current specification states normal modes of 5, 9, 15, and 20 volts for fixed output voltages that your device negotiates for. This device adds in the 12 volt mode also, always welcome. This power adapter also has an adjustable output voltage mode called Programmable Power Supply or PPS. This mode can help devices charge more efficiently and therefore faster. The power adapter has a 20 volt mode up to 65 watts of power or 3.3 amps. That does mean that Samsung super fast charging is not on the menu because it will not deliver the current required to charge in that mode. Let's turn the power up on this one to check out its performance. The first thing I see with this power adapter is it has power factor correction and it turns on very late. It does not turn on at all for lower power ports, and it only turns on after 48 watts for the higher power 100 watt ports. When this mode turns on, the efficiency drops a little, so not the most efficient correction circuit out there. When taken up to the full 120 watts of output power though, the power does stay nice and clean and the adapter can deliver the full power output no problem. It doesn't get too hot. Either. The power negotiation is better than a lot of multi-port USB chargers. It looks like it still does have to renegotiate, but the terms are different. The top two ports make up the 100 watt group and the bottom two ports make up the 20 watt group. The top ports always renegotiate and the power level on the top two ports decreases with both lower ports also being used. The power sharing is far from even and actually doesn't really even give you a ton of information on how this shares power. 
there really isn't a lot of marketing material on this adapter at all. So it looks like 100, 100, 20, and 12 watts is with the rating for the four ports, but then it changes based on the number of devices plugged in. And the top ports did not share evenly either. Overload is testing when the device safely shuts down, when too much power is drawn. This can happen from a short circuit or a misbehaving device. The power adapter tripped on overload at 109 watts. This is a safe limit. With the power adapter split the way it is, when the 100 watt section overloaded, the other section stays online even during this, so the 20 watt port stayed on while the 100 watt port shut down. The power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current, and therefore the lower the loss of wires and transformers that supply your power. The goal is to have all the waves look like the same shape as the yellow line, a sine wave. This power adapter has power factor correction, but it has a major issue. It has a major issue. At full load, it looks great, actually amazingly good. But then, as the power is decreased, the full picture comes out. At 45 watts, the power factor correction turns off and the adapter is not power factor corrected. This is a very high threshold and it leads to noisy power. It is disappointing to see this and it lowers the value of this adapter significantly. The voltage levels were okay on this power adapter. Each mode held within the tolerance of the USB specification. This shouldn't have any issues powering lots of devices. The power adapter is acceptable for DC voltage performance. Here's the detailed data for this device. This is a tale of two adapters. The idle performance is a little bit high, but it's not out of range with the other adapters. The middle area, the power factor correction is not turned on. It doesn't matter the mode. So some power adapters turn on PFC with a 20 volt mode. This one keeps it off and is instead only turned on at a power threshold. At least for my daily charging needs, this would never enter power factor correction mode. In terms of efficiency from 10% up, power usage in this power adapter is okay. On the higher power levels, the performance does get a lot better, but it still isn't the best I've seen. Okay, time to compare the data. I have tested a couple adapters at exactly 120 watts, and I also pulled in data from near wattage adapters. When comparing the idle data with others, the wattage is just low enough to meet the claims of DOE6. It really meets it by the error of the measurement. It isn't the worst power adapter I've seen, but it is on the higher side still. On the idle graph, this is on the higher side. It compares favorably to some adapters, but loses to others. This adapter does meet the DOE6 energy efficiency requirements though, even if just barely. When comparing the overall data with other adapters in this power range, it is really bad. It struggles to keep up with modern power adapters. The efficiency is not class leading and the power factor turns on so late that it really hurts the overall performance of the adapter. This does do okay on the higher end of wattage, but power adapters don't spend a ton of time there if they're just charging things. On the average power consumption graph, we can see something interesting. The 120 watt adapters, three are listed, this and the Bassius, end up using a little extra wattage. The Bassius is a bit cleaner in the lower power mode, so it does okay, but neither really hold up to the overall efficiency of the Anker 120 watt unit. It does seem that one is the better option in this category. Okay, well there it is, the Mophie 120 watt power adapter. I think this is a skip, to put it simply. It is expensive, it is functional, and it will certainly work with your Apple devices as it is sold on the Apple webpage, but is it the best device for charging your Apple products? Absolutely not. There are other adapters for that, and I looked at one a couple weeks ago that absolutely crushes this one in the performance department, the Satoshi 165 watt. This Mophie does have some good features though. The power split and negotiation is nice with the 100 watt between the high power ports and the 20 watts on the lower power ports. It doesn't reset the power renegotiation until you use both the high power ports at once. It does have better negotiation of USB power delivery, but I tend to base it all on the performance metrics, and in that perspective, it doesn't quite hold up. Compared with the Anker 120 watt, it is enough less efficient that I wouldn't bother. It does have the safety listing and it does meet energy efficiency standards, so it can't be faulted there. There are cheaper and or better options available though. The decision is ultimately up to you. Does this meet your needs for charging? Leave it in the comments. There will be an affiliate link as usual to this product in the description. Okay, time to apply the sticker. This is tested and on the database, so you can take a look at how it stacks up. This isn't high on the list. Thanks for watching. Next week I have some options for what the video will be about. I do have this mini computer that could be an option for a future video, or at least a detailed look at its power consumption. Check my website for upcoming videos, there's a schedule of release dates. I have too many more of these adapters to get through, so many more videos in the future. Goodbye.